Hey everyone, welcome to the Active Towns channel. My name is John Zimmerman, and this is part two of my ride with Joshua Funches, a new resident to the Austin area from Philadelphia. And in part one, we were exploring the cycling infrastructure in the Miller neighborhood, and left off taking in Miller's new bike and skate park, which is a huge hit for kids young and old. Here in part two, we'll be leaving the Miller neighborhood on our way to the Martin Luther King Transit Station and then onto the Boggy Creek Trail. I hope you enjoy the ride. Fantastic home. So I haven't even explored these neighborhoods over here. This is what I explored on uh, yeah. roller skates. On roller skates. Yeah. I haven't even been over here because it's all brand no, new. No, you literally go down there and so, it's all new. So let's let's go let's go down here just a little bit. Um, we'll we'll come back and go down and yeah, we'll take sure. uh, Mainer in a bit. Yeah. I want to point out though because we haven't ridden on any streets like this, which are again, there's no bicycling infrastructure here. We're just rolling down a small street, uh, you know, a, a neighborhood street. And because of the dimensions and because of the low volumes and because of the slow speeds, this can be part of the bicycle network. Even though it's not identified as a bicycle network, it can be. Let's turn right here and just get into the neighborhood. And hey, a quick note to my Dutch fans, I totally know that these streets are not narrow from the perspective of what you see in the Netherlands. But for North America, this is actually pretty good. And again, same thing. We're, we're in an environment where uh, you don't need necessarily bike lanes because it's going to be a slow speed environment, low volume of motor vehicles and therefore it can be, you know, a, a, a comfortable environment for people to ride bikes in. This is crazy. They're still literally building like everything right around. Yeah, no, this is the, the, the last of it. Yeah, there, you'll also notice too that there's alleyways. So these homes are all serviced by alleys. We'll turn left here and we'll go past this park on the right. So another neighborhood park right here. That looks, it's already looking good. And then you, then you take a look at, you know, the fact that, yeah, these are, it's a denser housing, housing market. So this is where I start to question that thing you said earlier, like, mm -hmm. um, when you said like the affordable housing is very identical to the, you know, regular market housing. Yeah, you can't tell. None, you, there's no way to know which of these units is, is affordable or market rate. It's integrated in. That's very crazy. Because that's one of the, 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 the stupidest things that we ever did with quote unquote affordable housing. Is make it look like affordable housing. Yeah, you make it look like affordable housing and you say, oh, uh, the people who are, you know, quote unquote, the poor people, they're over there. We're gonna turn left here, yeah. So earlier you were asking about, you know, the different trails and whatnot. So, so we have over here, you can see the network of trails and lakes and pathways and natural areas. And as you can see right down in here. So there's lots of opportunities for kids to experience nature, go fishing in a pond, see the ducks and the geese playing. Yep, yeah. yep. This is, this is uh, where I almost fell over because I, if you go down there, there's like a, the natural walking trail like you mentioned and I wasn't looking where I was going went right off the smooth trail right on it and I was like whoa <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> almost went face first now we're also rolling past you know some larger single family homes so there's a good mixture of denser housing types town homes uh, row houses apartment complexes as well as single family homes There's i feel like it there. gives you the luxury that you're looking for mm -hmm. the privacy and also like the space right. all, all in one yes and you feel comfortable which i think is the ideal ideal type yeah yeah and within a very close distance you'll, you'll also be able to get to um you know a more an even denser type of housing type where you can get four and five stories uh, apartment complexes all of that within five minute bike ride from here so good stuff Very okay good. let's uh, let's go down and check out this good stuff here all right, all right. 
right. Yeah, you're right. There is a school here. It's called the Rise School. Yeah, this is what I was talking about. Yeah. I had noticed this and I was like, I thought to myself, wow. Yeah, Big Brothers and Big Sisters is right here. That's cool. Or I didn't even notice that. And then I... Salvation Army has a, a, a location here. So yeah, Very some nice beautiful. stuff right, right here. And, and then again, we've got our pro protected and intersection and then a separated bikeway feeding right into our skate park, bike park. So awesome. <laughs> it sure is. And you saw the amount of people rolling up as we were leaving. Yeah. You know what I was looking for though? One mm -hmm. thing I was looking for was diversity in, in like the population there. Yeah. I think I've only seen like one Hispanic family, but I was still looking for others, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, we, we, without, without a doubt, um, we need to be able to get a situation where, you know, people of color feel a lot more comfortable in this environment because that. literally they live right here, right across the street. That's what I'm saying because like, sometimes they tend to exclude themselves. Which, yes. Because it's not normal, it's not normally yeah. what we've been able to have access to. So it's almost like either good to, good too good to be true or not enough people are there, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna go. Yeah, exactly. And you see this, like we're riding side by side in a bicycle lane. Yeah. This is really nice. Yes, yeah, exactly. Here we are, side by side in a bicycle lane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think when I was here the first time, I have to go find the videos, but some of this wasn't here. Yeah, so this road right here, that's Tillery, so that's where the school is that we were looking at. Yeah. Well, that's a long wait time. It's a good look at the natural surface trail right off here on the right. And you can see just how much nature has been allowed to, you know, grow up in this area too. So this building, that you see off to the left here, past the tracks, you'll see that they went ahead and put in the red, the terracotta colored bike lane. Oh yeah, oh Integrated yeah. it right into the development. We're gonna make a right. Yep, this is, this is what it was. I think a good place to stop is right up here. So, something I wasn't used to yeah. was like right outside my home or my apartment yeah. being a uh, separated bike lane that takes me right kind of into the streets where I need to go with more either yeah. protected or separated bikeways. Yeah. That was amazing. Yeah. I was like, wow, yeah. I couldn't believe that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's so awesome. And like, it's almost as if it's integrated in a way where it's accepting, you know? Yeah. It's not like off or like be in somewhere, it's well-maintained. Right. It's like kept up to date. 
and then it's intentionally put somewhere where if I go out there, like you kind of see like traffic slow down purposefully because they know like, oh, this is a common thing. Right. Or like, I've used this before right. kind of thing. So yeah. I feel like folks kind of understand the vibe of where that's coming from and they just let you go, you know? Yeah, yeah. Never been beeped at. Yeah. <laughs> and, and this one has been around for a while. You look at it and you see the concrete here is just the normal gray color. Um, if this had been built, you know, in the last five years, yeah. uh, this would have been the terracotta color because they uh, would have yeah. the city would have had, you know, worked with them and said, hey, let's make sure we use the terracotta color. Now I'm going to show you something interesting too. So you were staying in this area here. Yep. Down this way, where the you see these uh, this fa these families, these yeah. kids and moms coming. There's a, there's a horrible hill over there. There's a horrible hill there, but notice there's uh, the 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 shared use path continues down that way. You eventually get to a street which is considered a uh, a bicycle friendly neighborhood street or a bicycle boulevard type street. Let's go check it out because that street actually then takes us back over to the Miller neighborhood where we were just at. Ah, all right. And so there's, an, in other words, we were on Mainer and we were on the separated bikeway right, with yeah. the, 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 you know, flex post, uh, but we could have also gone through a quiet, leafy neighborhood over in this area to get to the, uh, that development. Yeah, see, exactly. So let's go check that out and then we'll come back and I want to show you how this facility right here, this bikeway, connects right to transit. And so for some people, they can actually lock their bike up in a covered internal bike locker and then jump on the train and take the train either downtown or take the train all the way north up to the city of Leander. All right, all right. Let's wow. Go check it out. Oh, almost something like Philadelphia. Oh, you're talking about like where they're walking up there? Yep. Ah, oh, I never did that. I was always coming down here to the right and going out that way. Yep. But I did notice that immediately. I was like, ah, there's several ways to get to where I want to go. Yeah. Since they're playing on here, we'll just take the street. We'll go through this uh, pinch point and then stop and we'll talk about it. So, see what this is right here? This is a traffic calming pinch point that they have created with these flex posts. Eventually it could be done in more permanent infrastructure. Yeah. But again, this is the Cherrywood uh, neighborhood area bike priority boulevard where they are, it's a traffic calmed street, a traffic calmed area neighborhood. 20 miles per hour is the recommended and desired speed limit through here. And the reason why we do these things in these types of neighborhoods, because the, the volumes are low enough and the speeds are low enough, and when we can put infrastructure like this down that's lighter, quicker, cheaper, it helps to slow motor vehicles down, make it that much more comfortable. A perfect example, a right, perfect here. example right here. You know, the motor vehicle driver can stay behind, be patient, and a person can, can be able to ride comfortably and be able to make it to that same neighborhood that we were in over there in Miller. Yeah. So it's a different treatment. It's similar to what we were talking about when we were riding on the quiet residential streets in yeah. Miller. Are, yeah. It's just that this is an older neighborhood, an older facility. It's so like a, it's like a different iteration, yeah. 
Yeah, it's a different iteration of it. So there's more, there's more, you know, there, there's more than one way to go about doing this. You're right, so. you're right. Okay, cool, let's, uh, let's turn around and head uh, down so that we can show you the MLK uh, station and uh, the housing. You'll notice that you'll, you'll start to see more uh, apartments and denser housing and where people can live in what we call a TOD, a transit-oriented development. Transit, all right, that's new to me. I haven't heard of that one. That would have been nice to know, funny enough, because I feel like this would have been a fast way to get to HEB. But like, you know, Google didn't recommend that way to me, and I think that's what I was using at the time. Yeah. It's one of our biggest challenges is that uh, our bike mapping and routing systems don't oftentimes don't take into consideration just quiet residential streets. Yeah, and that, that would have been a huge help. Yeah. Like a real huge help. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Hey there. Hey, good job, good job. Go dad. Okay. Yeah, just like a map, I'm, I kind of can't get over it because it was so different. Yeah. Imagine kind of just waking up and being like, yeah, like I can get to where I need to go yeah. because something's literally built right outside for me to use to get where I need to go yeah. safely. Yeah. And then it gets highlighted once I get out the neighborhood. Yeah. And now you're going to kick yourself too when you see just how close this is to the whole network of the Boggy Creek Trail. Yeah, that was the one thing I can't remember. No, yes, I, I think I know what you're talking about actually now that I think about it. Okay. There was some train station and you kind of cross over or something yep, like yep. that. Yep, that's the Boggy Creek. Yep. Yep. I remember having to use that when I was here. Yep. And that can get you all the way to the Pedernales two-way cycle track. And then from there, you can basically get all the way to downtown. All right, I'm not sure where the cycle track is. Well, we will check on time and see if uh, maybe we ride to there and that's where I send you back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I haven't been back on this trail since I got here, which is, a sh you know, it just, it's, it's, not, it's just not in the way. I have the walnut. What you're going to see right ahead of you is brand new. Ah. Yes, it is. So when you were here before, this- This was not here, yeah. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. So again, this development created this facility and put it in. So, th so this, this is brand new because this uh, just got done. And then up ahead, you'll see it's at the transitional stage now where the lane markings are gone and these little tabs are in place so that the city can, uh, you know, reestablish, you see ahead, yeah. reestablish the two-way two -way cycle track. Watch out for the sign there. Yeah, this definitely wasn't here. So this, this is all, you know, because of all the construction in the neighborhood here, this has all been sort of, you know, in disarray. Um, but this will eventually be reestablished as a two-way cycle track, and um, we're actually going to get it into a, a construction area here, so we'll have to take the lane with the motor vehicles in just a moment. Yep. Looks like that part hasn't changed. But eventually, yeah, that'll be all protected, separated facilities right there. And then you see the train tracks right oh. down there. So that's the transit line. And we've got our green. That's a nice thing right there. I want to see if I could catch it actually. Yep. Yeah, so this is the Martin Luther King Station. So what do you think? Very good. Yeah. Bike parking. Bike parking. Train double way. Yeah. Housing and right here. We've got all, all of this housing here, as we were talking about. That is the TOD. 
the transit oriented that's development. That's what it was, TOD. TOD, right. yep. Transit oriented development. Transit oriented development. Uh, I also call TODs another kind of TOD. I call it a trail oriented development. Right, that's an interesting Isn't one. Isn't that cool? Yeah. yeah, all went around the trails. Yeah, all the I think this one is a little bit of a combo of a little bit of both, you yep. know? Exactly. And again, more traffic calming infrastructure. Lighter, quicker, cheaper, the flex post design that can always be redone later in concrete. Yep. I think that's one thing technology has gotten very well. Yep. Implement something and fix it later. Yep. We need to take way more advantage of that one. Yes. Yep. And so we're going to follow these, these two riders here. My cousin actually lives right down that way. All oh, right. See, this is the kind of thing I want to show to my family when a few of them get a chance to come down here, like all this opportunity. And like, want to see if they just would feel comfortable just from looking at it or what they think, you know, initially. Yeah. As folks that are not too, too into infrastructure and stuff, you know, they're just, you know, they just live, you know, which is the way it should be. Yep. So now we're on the, the Boggy Creek Trail. Dog up. And we see, you know, this infrastructure sort of shared between um, people walking, people biking. You'll see off to the left, there's neighborhoods right over there. Yep. I hear stuff going on over there. Yeah, look, somebody's getting a new roof. And then this <laughs> is a community garden here. Yeah, but I remember just trying to speed through here on an e-bike, and I was like, uh, a normal bike is faster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, actually, so this is one of the best parts. Yeah. So we had an Airbnb. Yeah. For one week, I stayed over there. Yeah. And then for the other week, I stayed down here to the right somewhere down there. Okay. We had to transfer some of our stuff from one location to the other. Yeah. And it made most sense to take this trail because it literally went from that side where we just came from the... Right. Uh, all the way through here. Yeah. And down there and just bam. You were yeah. just like right where you need to go. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. When the first thing you think of like what's the easiest way and a bike actually comes to mind. Right. That. And I had an e-bike too so I could just transfer everything I needed. Yeah. Got my backpack, put everything in and then bam, transfer everything from one location to the next and we were done. Yeah. That yeah. is... That's wicked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's super that's cool. Yeah. You also notice too that, you know, in this neighborhood here, we've got, you know, the ball fields that we're rolling past, the parks that we're rolling past. Yep. So this is a, a great example of how the trail system is able to connect community members to, you know, these activity assets, these, these ball once fields again, and yeah. these parks. Yeah, yeah, once again. That connectivity. Mm. Wow, wow, wow. I think just silo does work around here. Yeah. I think I always came out here and went down that way, so I don't think I've ever come down this way. Okay. Cool. So this part of the trail is, again, an older portion of the trail, and we can tell because, again, you don't see the red paving. Um, and then up ahead here, we'll, we'll pick up with the terracotta colored ah, paving. See, there again. you go. So boom, right here. And Now you have a separation of the bike facility versus the pedestrian facility. And uh, again, a really nice high quality uh, infrastructure. And again, you can see the connectivity here off to the left with the neighborhoods. So they are able to access the trail very easily. Yep. And then if you look to the right, you'll see there's the train tracks again. So that's part 
of the red line and this is part of what they call the red line trail red line trail very nice and again the the vision of the red line trail is to follow the red line all the way up the 30 miles up to leander that's a the really city of that, leander that's a really good vision actually yeah. that would be so nice 30 mile 30 mile trail right there yep exactly Wow, this art though. Yeah, and you'll notice, you know, even on some of depicted on some of the art here, we're very much in a black and brown community area throughout here. Um, throughout multiple times during the year, the um, the the you know communities will have major celebrations out here. Like the Juneteenth celebration in this particular park on this particular trail is freaking off the Richter scale. It's so much fun. And, you know, on, I would say on any given um, summer holiday or summer weekend, it's, you know, you just see, you know, tons of, of families out here enjoying the environment. Yeah. Now, we just transitioned to another uh, trail type. So we had a little bit of natural surface trail there. And so we have that combination of paved trails, natural surface trails, very, very common throughout this, this yeah, area. Yeah, it does it all. And so, again, we'll get on another natural surface trail. You gotta appreciate these trees in the summer. And the trees in the summer, absolutely. My goodness. Yep. Maybe life-saving. And we will actually be rolling right past the um, the area where Gisalo has, um, you know, some of their bikes, where they do some of their programming out of. Yeah. Which you may have seen in the past. I don't know. I did. I yeah. got a chance to ride with them, oh, and uh, we did like a whole little video. I think I even did a giveaway too, actually. Yeah which was really nice. I'll see if I could find it so I can show it to you, a little part. I think it was just silo too, like they're somewhere around here. Like yeah. there used to be like a little hump and I think it was a, mm -hmm. a construction hump or whatever. Yeah. Uh, I think they've removed it, but I have to double check. Okay. But I thought that was really interesting. Like, you know, I came back and things that once again are constantly changing here while they're upgrading this area. Yeah. It almost makes me feel like a local. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. I think it was April that I came around, which was really nice weather. Okay. Yeah, April's typically a pretty nice time of year. Yeah, and right up here is, is part of the Gisalo Foundation's Cycling Initiatives group. I feel scared for her on the crutches. I feel like she should probably be on an e-bike or something. <laughs> <laughs> I've slipped on leaves before, and oh, oh my God. Yeah. It really hurt. Yeah. Or hurt. Actually, I ruined one of my, one of my jerseys that way. <gasps> they did remove it. No way. Yeah. It was right here. Yeah, it was These right are here. right here. Yeah. yeah. What? And they fixed this whole path right here. Yeah. Wait, did they? Yes, they did. What? No way. So this is a little art installation here. Over here, too, um, you'll see where this guy on the scooter is. Uh -huh. Okay, coming down. Yeah. So that's Petternalis. And that is a two-way uh, separated cycle path, separated with flex posts. And that Petternalis Trail, and that's where the, the, the gals, or the, the couple that we were riding behind, mm -hmm. they're continuing off in the distance there on Petternalis. If you stay on that, it'll take you all the way to the lake. Wow. All the way to Lady Bird Lake. Lady Bird. Yep, and it'll take you all the way to the Butler Hike and Bike Trail. Or it'll also take you to, as we mentioned earlier, 5th Street and 6th Street, and then you can turn and then head towards downtown and reconnect with the, the Red Line Trail. Yeah. 
Yeah, so very good, sir. Good stuff. Thanks for riding with me today. No, thanks for having me. This yeah. is really awesome. Yeah. I got a chance to explore and we, yeah. we got a chance to check it out yeah. on bicycles. Any final thoughts on what you've seen today? Uh, one, 10 out of 10, need to do again. And two, um, definitely just enjoying the fact that I have access to it. Like it's just here. Yeah. And I think that that's really important. Nothing more than that. I just have access to it and that's what I yeah. like. It's really empowering when cities create environments which make it welcoming for everyone. You know, all, all ages, all abilities. Um, you don't have to be a quote unquote cyclist. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be somebody with high skills to be able to- Just you take know, it and enjoy it. it, it take it enjoyment and enjoy it and have it be something that's accessible for, for literally everyone in society. That's the whole point is it needs to be truly, truly welcoming for people, so. That's exactly what I was talking about, yeah. about, yeah. Yeah, like if I introduce this to someone, like what do I want them to feel like? What's one of the first things I want them to say to themselves and to feel welcomed is one of those things. Cause that's, yeah. the, that's what I had felt like in some areas and other areas I didn't feel so welcome, but yeah. I, it's definitely getting there. Yeah, good stuff. Great. Hey, thank you so much, man. Hey. Yay! Awesome. <laughs> Yay! Hey, thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this ride with Joshua Funches. And if you did, please, hey, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below and share it with a friend. And if you haven't done so already, be honored to have you subscribe to the channel. Just click on that subscription button down below and ring the notifications bell. Well, until next time, this is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health, and happiness. Cheers. And again, sending a huge thank you out to all my Active Towns ambassadors supporting the channel on Patreon, Buy Me A Coffee, YouTube Super Thanks, as well as making contributions to the nonprofit and purchasing things from the Active Towns store. Every little bit adds up and it's much appreciated. Thank you all so much. Mm -hmm.